After we left our campsite, in this episode we will head over to the town of Oban and beyond in the Scottish Highlands. Oban is a town in the west of Scotland in Argyll and Butte. Oban means the little bay in Gaelic. The population here is around 8,140. However, in the tourist season it grows to roughly 24,000 people and can get very busy. Oban is known as the gateway to the Isles due to the access to the other islands of the Inner and Outer Hebrides. Whether you're looking to do just a day trip to Oban or spend a few more days, there are quite a few things to do in this seaside town. We only spent half a day there, but there is so much more to do and explore. Oban's town center is always bustling with people, as there are many great restaurants and shops to choose from as well as the ferry service that takes you to the Isles of Mol, Iona, Carrera, and some others. For whiskey lovers, you can do a taste testing and tour of the Oban distillery, just a walk away from Oban's harbor and town center. This is one of Scotland's oldest and smallest distilleries. We skipped it because we had the children with us, but maybe in a future trip we'll give that a try. Makeg's Tower, the most prominent landmark in Oban, sits on top of Battery Hill and can be seen from almost any part of town. There is a bit of a hike to get to it if you're starting from the city center, as it sits on top of a very high part of town. It is free to enter and look around. And there is a nice view of the harbor and the town below. This Roman or Greek looking monument was built in 1897 by the wealthy banker John Stuart McKegg, who wanted to give back to the community by providing work to the local stonemasons during the winter months and to create a monument to his family. As you can imagine, he was inspired by the Colosseum in Rome. McKegg's original plan was to also build a museum in a central tower, however these plans stopped after he passed away. One of the many things I absolutely loved in Scotland was all the gardens everywhere, just so green and so many beautiful flowers and plants in the summer. Also known as the seafood capital of Scotland, this is a great town for foodies to try fresh seafood delicacies. We tried Nori's Fish and Chips, a local favorite family-run business and also Oban's oldest business. Their fish is cooked to order with local fresh fish, there is seating inside available, and Gordon Ramsay, Gino and Fred all dined at Nori's while they were in Oban filming their TV series. Oban's Harbor is the busiest part of town, holding the Kalmak Ferry Terminal, as well as great food and fine dining options, which offer amazing sunset views. During the low tide, there's a pebble beach that appears behind the harbor wall. So we went here with the kids to take a little break from walking around.
On our way to the next campsite, we wanted to go check out Castle Stalker. The only location we found where we could park the motorhome was at this cafe, which in turn also has a viewpoint of the castle. We grabbed some coffee and sandwiches and headed over the pathway to see the castle better. After walking through this little wooded area, we stumbled onto these cute little guys. Come here, Caleb. Come here, Caleb. Can you taste it? No. Why? So you don't scare them. Located just 30 minutes north of Oban, Castle Stalker is a picturesque castle that sits on a small island and is surrounded by the waters of Loch Lean. In the Gaelic, Stalker means hunter or falconer. This castle was built around 1320 and first belonged to the McDougals, and then the lands around, and including the castle, were passed on to the Stuarts. As a result of a drunken wager, in 1620 this castle passed on to the Campbells, but then was again regained by the Stuarts in 1690. It also played a part in the Jacobite Rising of 1745. It became a garrison of government troops, and the Stuarts of Appen along with Prince Charlie tried to take the castle, but it was too strong and their two-pound cannonballs merely bounced off the walls. Abandoned in 1840 and fast forward to 1965, it was rebuilt and restored to what it is today. The castle is now fully habitable and is privately owned. There are limited tours available, so if interested, check their website for availability and advanced booking. We arrived at the campsite after 6 p.m. and thankfully I had reserved a spot to park a few days prior. I'm sure glad I did as the site was totally full upon arrival. We really wanted to sit outside and enjoy the afternoon but those pesky little midges were out for the hunt. So instead, Dad worked on getting dinner going and I and the kids went to take our showers. This time on the menu was a Brazilian dish with rice, beans, ground beef and zucchini squash. Easy and one of our favorites. The campsite area was super calm and quiet. And the facilities were very nice and clean. This kitchen area made it a lot easier to do the dishes with more space. The next morning after breakfast, we headed over to visit the stunning Aileen Donnan Castle. We had stopped by in our 2021 trip, but did not do the full tour. And this day was so beautiful, we decided to go for it. Aileen 
Aileen Donnan is one of the most photographed castles in Scotland and has appeared in quite a few movies and TV shows, such as Highlander, James Bond, The World Is Not Enough, Maid of Honor, The Princess Switch 3, and many others. This castle is not an authentic medieval castle, as what we see today is the result of 20 years of reconstruction. But more to come on this in just a bit. Surrounded by water and beautiful rugged hills, it's no wonder this castle is so famous. Aileen Donnan receives over half a million visitors from all over the world yearly. The castle sits at the meeting point of three locks, Duich, Long and Alsh, and it is not far from the Sky Bridge, making this the perfect stopping point to tour this castle and take some amazing pictures before heading to the Isle of Skye. Aileen Donan means Island of Donan and refers to Saint Donan who lived in this small island back in the 7th century. The first castle was built in either the 12th or 13th century to protect the land from the Viking invaders who dominated western Scotland and the Hebridean Islands. The famous Clan Mackenzie name also originated from this castle, when the grandson of Colin Fitzgerald, who owned the castle in 1263, was known as Coinac Macoinac in Gaelic, which means Kenneth, the son of Kenneth, and in turn ended up becoming Mackenzie in English. Robert the Bruce may have taken refuge here in 1306 or 07 before he was king. In the Jacobite Rising of 1719, Spanish forces had been sent to support the Jacobites and were based at the castle. Three Royal Navy frigates sailed into Loch Osh and attacked the castle. The bombardment lasted three days due to the strength and the height of the walls. When the English captain sent his men ashore with only 46 Spanish soldiers to defend it, the Spanish were quickly overwhelmed and taken prisoner. As the government troops searched the castle, they found 343 barrels of gunpowder and used it to blow up Aileen Donnan. For nearly 200 years, all that was left of this once mighty fortress was a ruined stump. John McRae Gilstrap bought the island in 1911 and began the rebuilding process with the help of Farquhar McRae on a venture that took them 20 years and 250,000 pounds, nearly 18 million pounds at today's values. After crossing the bridge and entering the castle walls through the portcullis, you enter the inner courtyard. The castle reopened in the current design in 1932 and is still owned by the McRae family. The current design was confirmed to be faithful to the original design when old plans were discovered, later stored in Edinburgh Castle. We spent almost two hours here, exploring both outside and inside as well as having lunch and looking at the huge gift shop that they have. And then after lunch, dessert with a nice view. There's a cool viewpoint right across the castle up in the hill, and it makes for a magnificent view of Aileen Donnan from above.
If you haven't yet, check out our other Scotland videos on our channel after this. And if you enjoyed this video, stay tuned for the next one, where we head over the sea to sky. If you like our videos, please subscribe to help us grow our channel.